Don't get me. Gabby, what are we celebrating? My divorce! <laughs> Don't get me. Gabby, what are we celebrating? My divorce! <laughs> so you heard the video, so now we're gonna go over a couple of stats. The United States has the sixth highest divorce rate in the world with 40% to 50% of married couples filing for divorce. Usually second or third marriages in the United States have a higher divorce rate, 60% of second marriages and about 73% of third marriages end in divorce. Couples going through their first divorce are usually at the age of 30. Married couples between the ages of 20 and 25 are 60% likely to get a divorce. Black women divorce at a higher rate, 38.9% than women of any other race. According to sociological research by MJ Rosenfield, women file for divorce twice more often as men. Almost 70% of women initiate divorce in the United States compared to 31% of men. And they also stated that such disparities results from women's high and later unmet expectations of emotional support from men. There is a consistent trend regarding marriage and divorce rates among women across the United States. For example, black women usually display the lowest marriage probability and the highest divorce rates. At the same time, Asian women get married at a higher rate and are less likely to get divorced. Black adults have the highest divorce rates and the lowest marriage rates, but according to research, they also marry at later ages, 32 for men and 31 for women. Black women are the only group among other races with a number of divorces higher than the marriage rate. In 2018, there were 31 divorces among the black population and 17.3 marriages per 1,000 people. The share of ever divorced black women was 38.9% per 1,000 married women in 2016, compared to 34.4% for whites. 13.9% for Asians and 33.7% for Hispanic origin women. Black adults also make up the largest share of never married group, notably 79% of the 25 through 29 year old black women and 18% of the 55 year olds were never married as of 2016. Ethnicity is one of the most notable predictors of divorce. For instance, Asian Americans have traditionally shown the lowest rates of divorce of all races. Currently, it's 12.4 divorces per 1,000 people with at least one divorce for 18% of Asian American women and 16% of Asian American men. Hispanic origin Americans are the second largest group regarding the number of divorces. An average of 18.5 marriage dissolutions were registered in 2018 among the representatives of this ethnicity, 30% of them being women and 27% being men. White Caucasian Americans fall third with 15.1 divorces for 1,000 people, specifically 30% of white women and 36% of white men have been divorced at least once. Finally, black Americans divorce at the highest rate compared to any other ethnicity in the United States. In particular, they had 30.8 divorces per 1,000 people in 2018. So you heard some of the stats that I read off to you. So now we're going to get into the comments and pretty much every comment is going to be the exact same thing. Let's cook. One person said, I know someone who suffered years of physical and mental abuse. It started after five years. She finally got the courage to walk away and through a divorce party. The point is the caption is dumb as hell unless you know her story. Roll the F up. Another woman stated, I got divorced in 2020 and I've slept like a baby ever since. He told me to leave and I left. He got mad because I left. He was my husband, so I listened. He said our marriage died and I said, say less. He said, I didn't fight hard enough. You don't get to come at me, especially as your wife, and tell me to get out and think that you can recover from that. Another person stated, she's celebrating release of toxic cycle. TF, y'all wild. Another person the whole stigma of failing at marriage is what keeps people in dysfunctional and abusive relationships. Everyone has a story. I think the world would be a better place if we seek to understand one another. But obviously only one side of the world has a story and only one side is important when it deals with divorce. 
Another person said, she's probably celebrating freedom from abuse you don't know. Uh, guy stated, I call BS on abuse, but I do see a well-played calculation attack on a bank account. Yeah, that's highly possible. Another person stated, being free from unhappiness is never a failure. Plus, she can remarry in no time. She is pretty. You go. Another person stated, she's celebrating freedom. Promise, once my divorce is final, I'll be doing the same. 10 years of emotional and mental abuse, 10 years of being used for uh, military check and benefits, 10 years of moving out of fear. Yep, damn Skippy, I'm celebrating a, fa a failing marriage, but a successful getaway. Another person, y'all really hate to see black women happy, shaking my head. Another person said, if something no longer fits you, do what makes you happy. Celebrate the bad marriage and get another chance with a happy one. Everyone's so quick to judge, but half of y'all never been married. Another person, I don't see anything wrong with this. I've seen men and women celebrate. Uh, celebrate. Some people don't make it out of a toxic marriage. They end up in the grave. Another person, I pray I never celebrate this. Yeah. Another person, some people use laughter to cover up pain. It's a form of releasing trauma. Another person, she's going to cry when she is alone. Another person, it's nothing but hating ass men in the comment section, which is very telling to each of his own. I'd rather be single and miserable than doubling my misery with a clown. But that would be a clown of your choosing. But anyways... Another person, fellas, look at these comments. Of course, we don't know any of the details about this woman and her marriage, but what we do know is that what women say about marriage, that's true. Act accordingly. Stay safe, my good brothers. Another person, or she could celebrate leaving a toxic, unhealthy dynamic in the marriage and finding her peace again. Sometimes leaving is better choice than staying where your mentally your mental health is at risk another person a failed divorce does not make her a failure sometimes things don't work out and that's okay i'm sure he's happy about it too probably somewhere having a beer with his boys watching a game and trying to see who's next do you want her to be depressed another person he could have been abusive maybe he cheated healing and moving on sometimes it is cause for celebration another person got to change the narrative from staying in situations that no longer serves us Another person, on behalf of the streets, welcome back. <laughs> Another person, might be a win, not a failure. Don't judge if you don't know. Another person, yes, secluded depression is the sane route. I got some friends throwing a divorce party, and this was after many buckets of tears. Another person, I've heard this is becoming common. If the marriage was that bad, I guess I can get why some people were celebrated being over. Another person, that's from the movie brown sugar another person some men don't start the torture and abuse till you say i do so what may be a failed marriage to one may be freedom or a happy ending for another another person said definitely two sides to that coin hard to have a further opinion without knowing the details personally so due to the effect of that, you mostly see only one common denominator in the comment section and everybody saying the exact same thing, repeat on repeat and repeat, just worded differently. This is some of the factors that deal with divorce, right? Number one, financial troubles are also another common reason for divorce. According to divorce stats, economic issues cause about 25% of divorces. Number two, infidelity or extramarital affairs are the second most frequent reason for divorce. Number three, roughly 20 to 40% of marriages end in divorce because of a cheating partner or infidelity. Number four, alcohol or drug use caused about 24 percent of divorces number five married couples who argue consistently are another reason for divorce about 57.7 percent of couples get divorced because of daily arguing so i just want to reiterate out of all of the comments that i was able to read that greater majority came directly from women a few, if not just one of them, basically stated, you know what, I can't even make a full detailed assumption on this. Um, I, I can't even come through with anything because I don't know the full story from directly both parties. Because I want everybody to understand, right? 
as I read the article directly off to you, 70% of the time women initiate divorce. And also was stated before that the stats go up to about 80 to 90% when you have women who are college educated. So let's not get things confused. It's not men out here that are running over to a divorce lawyer trying to do this, this, that, and the third, and then turn around, boo hoo hoo, and then you want to sit up there and celebrate because you know that you're going to have a great payday on top of the fact that you got you know, a degree or a career. Like I said, get money, you know, hand over fist. And again, this is the one reason why a lot of guys don't want to sit up there and get married because a woman can just up and get divorced for any reason. Oh, you're, you're, you know, you're asking me to do, you know, too much stuff. We're, we're disagreeing on this, this, that, and the third. Normally in relationships, people actually work on things. Obviously when it deals with women, it's like, well, this ain't really working out. Um, this was good for what it was. I've been here for five years. I'm going to take your pension, your social security, and whatever else that you got. And uh, yeah, but like I said, this is Western culture. This is American culture. Nowhere else in the world really do you have women out here celebrating getting a divorce. Nowhere. Nowhere. And like I said, um, the stats get even worse when it deals with the remarriages, when people want to go out here and run and get married two or three more times. Your likelihood of getting divorced even shoots up even further. So like I said before, she's celebrating this and then chances are very great. She's going to try to go out there and get married again to some other type of guy. And this one, I'm going to, in a sense, label a sucker because the first one, it obviously didn't work out for whatever reason. But we only know one side and all of the women in the comment section basically stated, oh, it was the man's fault, the man's fault, the man's fault, the man's fault. He was abusive. He was this. Like I said, painting the dude as the villain, not knowing specifically her role, what it is that she did or if the guy actually initiated the divorce, not knowing what it is that took place. But every woman there wants to take her side because why? She's a woman at the end of the day. And every woman has a story. Every woman knows somebody. Every woman has seen this. Every woman is empathizing through another woman and leaving, living through their experiences of their divorce and their hatred of men and their disagreements. It's crazy. It's a thousand percent crazy. Like I said, none of those women know specifically what it is that that woman contributed to in that marriage to the defunction or to the argument or to the deterioration of the marriage, but all of them have come to the common denominator that the man is the villain. The man is the villain. Like I said, only in America, this is, this is strictly American culture. It's a strictly westernized type of culture and you can see it.